wants to play some card wars? Hello, my commander friends, and welcome to the Uncommon Commander, a YouTube channel dedicated to the underappreciated cards and strategies of the commander format. Sorry for the delay since the last video, I just moved. I'm almost completely unpacked now, so unfortunately, you have to listen to me talk again. As many of you may have noticed, there is a new secret layer drop that has some truly awesome art in it, and while I know that the artist Wizard of Barge hasn't actually done any art for Adventure Time, his style totally reminds me of it. So I've decided to do an Adventure Time Vorthos deck featuring the Mimeoplasm. He looks like a crazy demon from Hudson Aberdeer's realm, and it looks like Finn is on top of a mountain trying to tell him to stop rampaging or else... In fact, even though he looks nothing like Hunson Aberdeer, we're going to pretend that he is Hunson Aberdeer. Oh, by the way, that's Marceline's dad, in case you don't remember. He fits well, as we know that Hunson Aberdeer likes midnight snacks, and he'll be turning the best dead creatures into midnight snacks in this deck. So obviously we're going to include the secret layer cards in this deck as well, but that's left me searching for other cards to include, and the whole of MTG is my oyster. So, what have I come up with? Well, let me show you. But before I do show you, I ask that you please give a sweet little demonic tap to that like button in order to help my videos get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. And while you're at it, click the subscribe button with notifications on if you want to catch my future content. Thanks, everybody. All right. Hudson Aberdeer has, as Hudson Aberdeer enters the battlefield, you may exile two creature cards from graveyards. If you do, it enters the battlefield as a copy of one of those cards with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to the power of the other card. This means we need two creatures, one with some awesome ability to copy and the other with a great power stat so that Mimeoplasm gets a bunch of counters on it. Due to the nature of this deck being Vorthos, it isn't completely reliant on its commander to win. We're going to try to win by creature or commander damage, or maybe through theft. And there's also an outside chance of a mill victory. But, I mean, it's seriously a small chance. Don't rely on that. The first thing I needed to do in building this deck was to find cards that felt a lot like references to Adventure Time. I wanted to capture the characters as faithfully as I could. I already mentioned that the Mimeoplasm will represent Hunts and Aberdeer, but, I mean, there are a lot of cool characters in Adventure Time. I actually had so many that I had to cut a few out. Notably, Lady Rainicorn, the Vampire King, and the Hierophant who looks shockingly like the MTG Vampire Champion of Dusk. It is seriously uncanny. It looks exactly like the Hierophant, only wearing armor. Lady Rainicorn was going to be Nightmare, but it doesn't really fit her all that well, and there were only a couple of flying horses to really pick from in these colors, so I decided to just exclude it. The Vampire King's closest look is actually a Johnny, but we're not playing white. Okay, so with those out of the way, let's get to the start of our show. We'll start with the most important characters of the show, Finn the Human and Jake the Dog. For this, Pyr and Toothy would have been a decent match with their partner mechanic and great power level, but I felt that Jiang Yanggu, Wild Crafter, and Mao Wu, Loyal Companion, fit the characters more closely. Jiang travels between planes like Finn ends up traveling between dimensions, and Mao Wu is a magical dog that can grow really big. Sound familiar? My goodness, I wish these had partner. Marceline actually presented kind of an interesting case for me. There are two cards that fit her very, very well. Drana, Calastria Bloodchief, and Voldaren Pariah. Marceline is the Vampire Queen who takes the powers of her vanquished foes in order to power herself up, which is the literal thing that Drana does, and is. But Marcy is a bit of a pariah among her kin, much like the Voldaren Pariah. She separates herself from them as an outcast, but under the surface, she is actually a monster, and does transform into that monster from time to time in the show. Voldaren Pariah also transforms into a monster, the Abolisher of Bloodlines. In the end, I decided to go with Drana, mainly because she is a legendary creature, and because she's a bit better of a Mimeoplasm target than the Voldaren Pariah is, but I'd understand if you'd want to go with the Pariah instead. I suppose we can't mention Adventure Time without also mentioning Princess Bubblegum. She'll be represented by Prime Speaker Vanifar. She only looks humanoid. She's actually made of slime and bubblegum. PB is also known in the show to be willing to sacrifice her own loyal subjects in the name of creating something new and, in her words, better through science. Vanifar's ability fits right into that. In fact, one of the things she created was Goliad, the Candy Sphinx, who ended up going out of control. To stop Goliad and to save the Candy Kingdom, 
Finn gave up some of his DNA to create another Candy Sphinx, this one a hero named Stormo. I don't have a card to represent Goliad in this deck, but I have included Stormo, who engages for all time in psychic battle against Goliad. Sphinx Mindbreaker seems like the perfect representation for Stormo. It also mills our opponents, which gives Hunts and Abadir some food. Alright, I know what you're thinking. Who cares about Stormo? He was barely even in the show. Well, fine, I agree. But I thought it was important to mention Finn's son. Whatever. Maybe you'll care more about, oh, Simon, the Ice King. After looking through a ton of cards, only one really seemed to fit well at all, and that creature is Gadwick the Wizened. Old Gadfly is able to draw you cards when he enters the battlefield, and also taps a non-land permanent when you cast a blue spell. I liken this to the Ice King freezing Finn and Jake in an ice cube to temporarily incapacitate them. And while I'm at it, I also want to mention that I included his crown. You may be thinking that I went with Crown of Doom, because it is a cursed crown after all. But the crown really doesn't feel Ice Kingy, so I went with Crown of Empires instead. Paying 3 mana and tapping it causes you to tap a target creature much like Gadwick's ability. Further, if you also have the Scepter of Empires and the Throne of Empires, which I have included in this deck, you'll capture the heart of your princess with the magic of your crown and she'll join you in holy matrimony. I also really want to get some little penguin soldier creature tokens so I can use them with the Throne of Empires to create an army of penguins. If anybody knows anybody who would alter art like that, Please give me their contact information. I, I want to get these tokens badly. And speaking of princesses, is any more dazzling than Lumpy Space Princess? Oh my glob, Bradley, look at these lumps! Experiment Kraj is lumpy and purple. What more could I ask for? And like LSP, she's just learning who she is. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't include this next character, even though it really can only loosely be called a character. It's the Decimator of Provinces. I assume he's a Decimator because he ate the cornfields, dude. Cornfields stink. He also has haste, which makes me happy because as soon as I cast him, I flooped pig. And now, I'm the cool guy. We really have only talked about heroes so far. Or at least, characters that aren't evil. Don't worry, we've got some real bad guys in here to finish things off. We're going to go in ascending order from least evil to most evil. Or is that descending order because evil is negative? Well, you know what I mean. First up, we have the biggest jerk in both the Candy Kingdom and on Mars. It's a magical, wonderful, fantastical jerk. The Magic Man. And who in all of MTG is a big jerk that likes to turn people and animals into things like feet? Or elk? That's right, Oko Thief of Crowns. Today, a magical life lesson comes to your opponents. When are you going to turn me back, Oko? Not until you appreciate what a jerk I am. Okay, so the magic man is just a jerk who doesn't care about the lives of others. He's not actively killing anyone. The next person must be really evil. And oh, he is. His name is Billy. He's Finn's hero, and he's a super good guy. Or he was until the Lich took his form, and who better to portray the Lich than Volrath, the Shape Stealer. If you squint hard enough, and the foil card is at just the right angle, he even resembles the Lich. Kinda. Finally, we have the most evil character in the entire multiverse. He has utter contempt for authority, and even for his friends. He actively defies the rules, glares with his baleful, soulless eyes, and would happily take over the world if he weren't so distracted by shiny things. It's Gunter, played by Frost Raptor. We're using this little sweetie because it turns out that Wizards of the Coast hasn't printed any penguins in any legal sets, so the best we've got for now is a snow creature bird. But on the plus side, he is a pretty good target for Mimeoplasm to clone, with that activated shroud ability. One last bit of evil, Gunter's going to require us to shell out some dough for some snow lands. Oh, Gunter. Alright, to cast those creatures, we're going to need mana. So, we're going to want ramp. We do have a couple of one-drops that appropriately mimic the classic Wayfarer's Bobble, Indiligent Farmhand, and Font of Fertility. Then we also have a two-mana spell in Sakura Tribe Elder, which we can use to sacrifice and search for a land. 
Since we're casting a 5 mana commander, we don't really mind having 3 mana ramp. And that's good because there's a lot of it. Some ramp that I tried to keep relatively on Adventure Time's theme are Far Wanderings, Grow from the Ashes, and Map the Wastes. Far Wanderings loosely has the feel of a long adventure, while Grow from the Ashes and Map the Wastes are here to kind of reference how the world of Adventure Time has sprung up from a nuclear wasteland. Fertiland, Silkwing Scout, and Search for Tomorrow round out our three mana ramp spells. Turning the Mimeoplasm into a Fertilid can actually ramp you by a ton of lands. Silkwing Scout can be sacrificed in order to ramp out a basic land and can be used for the Mimeoplasm in a pinch. Search for Tomorrow can be suspended for two turns by spending one mana on it instead of casting it for its regular cost of three. That's a great turn one play. We also have a couple of more expensive ramp spells. Circuitous Root costs four mana and portrays just the kind of labyrinth I would expect Finn and Jake to get lost in. It finds either Guildgates or basic lands. Boundless Realms is Basically, a mana doubling spell in this deck since we're running almost exclusively land ramp. It also reminds me of Finn traveling between multiple dimensions. Now we're going to move on to card advantage, and the nice thing here is that we are in both black and blue, which gives us some seriously good options. Pure card draw options include Argwell's Bloodfast, Greed, and Underworld Connections. Argwell's Bloodfast and Greed are both card draw engines that let you exchange life for cards. Argwell's Bloodfast also can become Temple of Aklazots, a name that I am getting quite good at saying due to all these videos. Underworld Connections is also an engine that does that, but uh, it can only be used once per turn instead of repeatedly. I liked that it's called Underworld Connections when Hunson Abadir is the ruler of the Nidosphere, which is basically the Adventure Time version of the Underworld. And then you have Greed, which brings to mind all of the money that Finn and Jake have gotten from their adventures, and uh, that episode where they tried to spend it, and all of that money nearly corrupted Jake. And Argwell's Bloodfast, well, I mean, that's just there because we really needed a card draw spell. Moonlight Bargain is an instant speed version of Greed, allowing you to look at five cards and then pay two life for each one that you want to put into your hand. The rest go into your graveyard to feed the Mimeoplasm. Some other card draw spells that help feed Mimeoplasm from your deck are Fact or Fiction and Epiphany at the Drown Yard. Try to make a friend before using these, and you might actually get to keep all of the cards you reveal. Of course, maybe we'd prefer to use somebody else's cards instead of our own. For this, we've got Siphon Mind, Coerced Confession, and Villainous Wealth. Siphon Mind refills your hand while forcing the others at the table to discard, filling their graveyard for Mimeoplasm targets. Coerce Confession mills an opponent and draws you a card for each creature that was milled this way. And Villainous Wealth lets you just cast your opponent's cards straight out of their library. Come on, Jake, quit being a villain with all your money. I think it's time we talked about the meatiest part of this deck. There's no point in making an Adventure Time deck if there aren't any adventures taking place. Thanks to Throne of Eldraine, we now have the adventure mechanic. Adventures work by casting the instant or sorcery spell attached to the adventurer creature. Once the instant or sorcery resolves, you put the creature into exile, and then you may cast the creature from exile, as long as it was exiled this way. If it was exiled some other way, you can't cast it from exile. Make sense? I hope so, because I'm done explaining it. We have a couple of adventures that help us ramp in Rosethorn Acolyte and Beanstalk Giant. Additionally, Beanstalk Giant is a huge creature that makes a meaty target for Mimeoplasm to copy. Note that the star, star, power, and toughness are counted no matter which zone Beanstalk Giant is in, per the first ruling on the Gatherer website. This means that when the Mimeoplasm is picking creatures to either become a copy of or to become counters of, the Beanstalk Giant is going to be a counters kind of creature. We want our opponents to also have creatures in their graveyard, so Merfolk Secret Keeper and Reaper of Night can help with that. The first of those will mill an opponent, and the second forces an opponent to discard. Another way to get cards into the graveyard, though, is through removal. Hypnotic Sprite and Murderous Rider can do that job, while Brazen Borrower merely returns a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. It can also be a surprise blocker against a flyer due to its flash ability, and once in the graveyard, he makes a good but not great Mimeoplasm target with his 3 power. From here, we have a lot of... I don't know what to call it. Uh, utility, I guess, on our adventurers? Thalmir Knight has an adventure that lets him cantrip at the cost of losing a life and is then a 1-1 death toucher, which is pretty decent. 
Fey of Wishes and Order of Midnight both cost 2 mana to cast the creature portion of. Fey of Wishes has an adventure that isn't entirely legal in EDH due to its being a wish card. I personally love the card, so I kept it in here, but you'll want to check with your playgroup to see if they're willing to allow you to cast the wish. I personally would allow it, because EDH is supposed to be fun and there's a lot of potential for fun here. They'd just better not be casting a stacks piece or an extra turn card. Its creature side has an ability that allows you to return it to your hand, so maybe you should have multiple cards queued up if your playgroup will allow this card. If your friends won't allow it, I'd recommend putting in something like Bane of Progress. It'll hurt everyone else way more than it hurts you. Order of Midnight will bring a creature from your graveyard to your hand with its adventure, and it's a flying 2-2 that can't block on its creature side. Lovestruck Beast, Queen of Ice, and Twin Veil, Twin Veil, I think it's Twin Veil Treefolk, each have adventures. Lovestruck Beast doesn't have many 1-1s to help him out, but it does make for a meaty creature once it's in your graveyard. Queen of Ice is our Ice Queen from the Fiona and Cake episodes of Adventure Time, and freezes any creature that she touches. And Twin Veil Treefolk has a meaty body and hands out 1-1 counters, which is something we want to do anyway. Finally, we do have a couple of payoff cards for all of these adventures we've been on. Lucky Clover lets us copy the adventure instant and sorcery portions of the adventure cards for added value, and Edgewall Innkeeper lets us restock our hand every time we cast a creature portion of the adventure cards. We have 13 out of a 15 possible adventure cards in this deck. The only missing ones are Animating Fairy and Smitten Swordmaster. The Swordmaster works really well for our Vorthos theme of this deck, as Finn is smitten with Princess Bubblegum for much of the series, but is absolutely awful in this deck. Animating Fairy is a card I absolutely love, but we only have four artifact cards in this deck. It would be cool to turn one of Oko's food tokens into a 4-4 creature with a sacrifice ability, but Animating Fairy will almost never have a target. Now we do have a very small discard of mill theme in this deck. When it comes to discard, you've already seen cards like Siphon Mind and Reaper of Night, but we also have Struggle for Sanity, which is actually a pretty fun card to cast on someone that you know has a few threats in hand to ensure you really get something good into their graveyard. It's also fun because of the interaction. I mean, nobody's going to like that you're making them discard cards, but this does turn the discard into a sort of game, which feels better for your opponent than just watching you take the cards out of their hand. Besides the small amount of mill from Merfolk Secret Keeper's Adventure, Consuming Aberration and Fleet Swallower are the big mill cards in this deck. Both can really mill the heck out of an opponent on their own, and are also great targets for the Mimeoplasm to copy. Again, we do see the star, star power, and toughness, and again, that can be used as counters for the Mimeoplasm. The abilities portion of Consuming Aberration is also really good for Mimeoplasm, though, so I guess pick what you want, you really can't go wrong here. The next group of cards are mainly removal cards, and the first one is... kinda strange. It's not a good card, but it does fit the deck. The card is Encroach. It costs 1 mana, and it allows you to look at a player's hand, choose a non-basic land card from it, and then that player discards that land. It's land hate, but in the form of discard. To ensure that they have a land in hand, I did cast this one pretty early on. Anyway, the reason this is in here is because of Lemon Grab. I can't look at the guy in this picture and read the quote in the flavor text without picturing Lemon Grab. The rate of spread in this region is unacceptable! Start again! <coughs> okay. Scavenging Ooze works as graveyard hate, buffing himself up and removing stuff you don't want your opponents to get back. Void Slime is a counter spell that counters a target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. That's what you get for trying to cast a Cyclonic Rift, Ice King. We also have a couple of pure removal spells in Acidic Slime and Force of Despair. Slime is hate on just about any kind of permanent, and Force of Despair acts as a board wipe at times and is free to cast almost always. We also have a couple of actual board wipes in Forced March, I mean Forced Adventure, and Plague Wind. Plague Wind additionally is completely one-sided, and it Reminds me of the gust of wind of a nuclear blast, like the one that ended the world in Adventure Time. Alright, now we have a few cards that give added utility to our deck. Adventurous Impulse is on flavor with both the art and with the flavor text, and will typically find us a land or a creature to put into our hand. 
Gaia's Blessing is also on flavor, but this one takes a small amount of explaining. You see, Finn carried a sword called the Demon Blood Sword, but eventually that breaks and is replaced by a Grass Sword. This card is an homage to those swords in addition to providing a lot of utility. We also have Necrotic Ooze and Beseech the Queen. The Ooze is just really good at loving what we're already doing while also being shades of adventure time with its art. Beseech the Queen tutors up a card of our choice, but I also like it because Finn does a lot of cruising with the royalty in the Candy Kingdom and its surrounding areas. Finally, we're on to the land cards. Don't worry, I didn't forget at the last second that we're doing a Vorthos deck and just throw a bunch of garbage together. Instead, I threw a bunch of garbage together that was on theme. For instance, who loves banding? Ha! <laughs> adventurers do! And that's why they gather at the Adventurer's Guildhouse. A land that doesn't tap for mana, but instead gives green legendary creatures that you control, bands with other legendary creatures. My favorite part of this is that we have Finn and Jake as mono-green legendary cards. They are 100% about adventuring together. Other utility lands are Karn's Bastion and Rogue's Passage. Karn's Bastion is just here because it's really great with counters, and Rogue's Passage is here to give the Mimeoplasm unblockable, but also because it vaguely reminds me of the City of Thieves episode of Adventure Time. It seems like exactly the kind of passage you'd find in that city. We have a fair amount of color fixing in this deck, as it can be sort of color hungry at times. Command Tower and Opulent Palace get us any of our colors, though the palace does enter the battlefield tapped. If we prefer to search our libraries for basic lands, we can use Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, and Blighted Woodland. As an added bonus, the Woodland actually ramps us if we want, or we can just act as a colorless source of mana that enters the battlefield untapped. We also have all three guild gates available to us, Demir, Golgari, and Simic, and all will enter the battlefield tapped, but they can be searched for with our ramp card Circuitous Route, which would have the lands you search for enter tapped anyway. For our basic lands, we're running 5 forests, 3 islands, 2 swamps, 5 snow-covered forests, 5 snow-covered islands, and 5 snow-covered swamps. <sighs> Alright, I'm afraid this type of deck isn't very conducive to doing a final countdown, so that segment is cut for today. If you're a fan of it, and now you're mad at me, I beg a thousand pardons. And if you won't pardon me, I'll tell Finn that you're an evil witch and he'll punch you for fun. But seriously, thank you for watching this episode of The Uncommon Commander. As always, I would like to implore you a final time to punch one or both of the like and subscribe buttons on your screen. And if you'd like to send a message to me, I can be reached at uncommoncommander at gmail.com, spelled exactly how it sounds, and how it appears on the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, friends.